gee, we have so few people here tonight. I'm used to seeing a big crowd. Well, I'm happy to see all of you that are here. Um, so uh, we're going to convene to open session now. It's at 6, uh, whatever. Uh, and there was action taken during closed session. The board voted 5 to 0 in favor of appointing district council as co-negotiator with the district manager for the property negotiation. That was it for closed session. So, uh, Holly, you want to roll call? All right. Director Swan? Here. Director Ferris? Here. Director Foles? Here. President Henry? Here. And Director Moran? Here. Any additions or deletions? I have none. Oral communications for anything that is not on the agenda for tonight. So is that's a no, no, no comments. All right. <coughs> Unfinished business. Uh, the board policy manual. Do you want me to yes, Council uh, Nichols will uh, deliver this item to the board. Okay. This this item is um, coming back to you following the discussion at the October 17th board meeting um, where there was substantial uh, substantive discussion of two points. I think there were a number of relatively non-controversial changes to the board manual. These items uh, involved a, a significant amount of discussion with, with me. Um, the two items are defense indemnification of a board member where conflict of interest is alleged and board member communications with uh, district council. So uh, what I did here is in light of the discussion and some of the different perspectives I heard, I came back with a set of alternatives as well as a recommended position on each of the two items. Um, I can, uh, I think what I'll do is just go over them in, in sort of a summary fashion unless uh, any of the board members want a more detailed description of, of any of the different alternatives. Is it okay if I just talk about them in a summary way? All right. So uh, under the defense and indemnification issue, this is section 23 of the board manual. Um, there were some changes presented at the last board meeting that raised a number of concerns. Um, the first alternative that's been presented is, is essentially what was presented at the last board meeting, but with some of the modifications that were suggested, also just a closer legal review in light of some of the particular comments that were made uh, during the meeting by various individuals, but it, it largely tracks, I think, the intent of the uh, what had been proposed in the prior board uh, uh, revisions to the board manual. Alternative two is a more limited modification of the board manual that essentially um, a, it keeps some additions, some protections that are not currently in place for this type of situation um, that were proposed without forcing the district to <coughs> undergo kind of a public process that could affect its its rights and abilities in, in the event of having to make a decision in a conflict of interest situation. So this is the, the alternative that I'm recommending as legal counsel, but the other alternatives are presented for your, for your consideration. Alternative three is no change to section 23 of the board manual. And I'm happy to discuss that. Um, I guess I'll go ahead and uh, talk about the second issue as well, and then we can circle back to whichever ones we want to discuss. So the second issue was board member communications with district council. Um, there was a question as to whether some language in section 8 of the board policy manual um, prevents uh, directors from individually consulting with district council about issues that, of district business that may be of interest to them. And my advice was that it does not prevent that. 
Um, but there were clearly some concerns that need to be addressed. So in light of those concerns, Alternative 1 presents a process whereby if a board member wants to consult with council, they would need to go to, it could be either the uh, board president or the uh, district manager, just to inform them that they are going to have a consultation and provide an estimate of the time that's expected. Then the board member would be expected to provide that estimate to council so that council can, can uh, respond in a way that's respectful of that time estimate. Um, and then if there are issues about the amount of time being requested by a particular director, that could be a matter of discussion without getting into the substance of what the consultation is about, since that would be a trying client privilege that allows directors still to talk to counsel with some additional checks in place. The second alternative that's presented is um, no change to the board manual, but the board instructs me um, by motion to exercise judgment and limiting the amount of time expended in connection with uh, requests or tasking by individual board members. Um, so then I, I guess it would be on me to kind of please, you know, to, or to maybe gather some more information about the, the requests that are being presented to me and try to regulate more carefully the amount of time I spend on those requests. Alternative three is no change uh, to the board manual and no instruction to me. I'm recommending number two of these three alternatives. Um, I'm happy to discuss any of them. No, I will, if we have to get into really specific strategic discussion on defense and indemnity, for example, we'll have to have a conversation about it. We have to try to find the yeah. On the um, communication with council, why do you think alternative two is better than alternative one? Alternative one strikes me as being a reasonable description of what common courtesy would be. You know, informing the, the, the president or the district manager that you want to talk to council and estimating how much time you're going to spend. You're not required to tell them what you want to talk about, which I think is important. It's just common courtesy. It's exactly what I did before we had this discussion when I wanted to talk to you. I went to Lois first. You know, I, I, to me, that, that sounds better because we codify it, and then we're not putting the onus on you to exercise judgment and, and to save money or prevent unnecessary discussions that are incurring costs for the district. I, mean, I just I don't understand why alternative two is better because it just puts the onus on you. Well, I, I can explain why I recommended alternative mm -hmm. two and alternative one, which is uh, that just from my perspective, alternative one is a bit clunky and may sort of discourage consultations with council and I have found over my time here as district council that at times I would like board members to communicate with me more rather than less and so I'd like to try to find a way that satisfies the concerns of those who have them about misuse of district council time without making it <coughs> difficult or risking there being gatekeepers on uh, communications with council. But that said, I haven't presented any alternatives here that I would, um, I, I'd say legally speaking, I could live with any of the alternatives that are presented here. You know, I don't have a legal objection to any of these alternatives. I guess going back in time for the last few years, uh, I've looked at, at Bill's from law firms that were in six figures because we capriciously asked questions of lawyers that maybe we didn't need to do. You know, I don't think we, we, we thought about the cost ramification of having discussions with lawyers. This is, again, I, I think I see alternative one is just a common courtesy, if nothing else, as well as a way to, to, to try to control costs with, with the use of, of your time because it is expensive. Uh, and we don't want to, you know, abuse you with, with questions that unnecessarily uh, go to the lawyer when maybe we could make the decision ourselves. I, I just, I, I think alternative one is, is a better option than alternative two. Alternative two. That's just my recommendation. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. That <coughs> certainly, there's. I think that that assumes a certain level of. Comedy among the board. The, the concern that I have with that is where you go to the boards where that doesn't exist, where there is a person who is a uh, 
um, uh, not in the same camp with everybody else. And it's very, very important that we protect board members that find themselves in that position for whatever reason. And any process that allows, um, that provides a tool by which the majority or the president can act to, in some way, even if it's indirect, control that board member raises big red flags with me. I understand what Gina is trying to do with that, um, but it, the way that it's written is, is, from my point of view, not good for that situation. And that situation could occur at any time. So I, I think we need to be very, very careful about putting those kinds of processes in place. Any other comments from board members? Um, so with alternative one, I see it as one more phone call you got to make before you're going to talk to council. You got to talk to Rick or the district president or the uh, district manager or the board president. Mm -hmm. One more phone call. <clears throat> And yet, uh, clunky it may be, uh, as that one phone call may be, but, and it also uh, gives a check on the amount of money that, uh, you know, I've never had giant, giant legal fees, but I understand they, you know, I, I take Blue's point. Um, and any kind of uh, expense should be part of our review. So I don't see anything that I disagree with in alternative one. And I would rather have it in uh, the district manager's hands and the board president's hands than um, leaving it up to the district council's judgment. Okay. May I suggest a couple of amendments if you want to go down that path? <coughs> Which would be um, deleting sentences two and four. Sentence two is the board member may but need not explain the exact nature of the matter for which the legal consultation is sought. If it's a may, there's no reason to have it. Right. And the last one, the board president, district manager, will not have the authority to prohibit the consultation, but may bring concerns about the frequency or amount of time associated with such consultations, the attention of the full board in open session. Um, there might be other ways to accomplish that. I don't know that we necessarily need to um, codify that particular thing. That is, in fact, the tool with which someone can be managed in a way that may not be in keeping with um, you know, what we're trying to do here, which is provide, a, at least what I would like to see us do, which is provide a free and open environment for people to express themselves. I think those those changes would add to the effectiveness of alternative one. I agree. Uh, I I'll, I'll, I'll agree as well. Okay. So I don't have a problem with those changes if you want to go with alternative one. I also don't have a problem with going with alternative two. Yeah, I I, I agree with you on that. I really don't have a big concern. Well, I'm kind of with you, Steve. I don't have a concern with one or two. So, any comments from the public? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Deborah Lowen, non people. Um, in that board members don't have any preference for alternative one or alternative two, I would say that I'm in favor of alternative two simply because alternative one makes it clear that the chair and the district manager, ha manager have no um, filtering authority here, so it seems like um, an unnecessary step for board members. I like, as I said last time, I like having the attorney exercise judgment. Um, if she feels that 
a board member is using up too much time where it's an inappropriate topic, I think that's a good thing to put on her. Um, part of the reason I'm a little worried about alternative one is that my understanding, maybe I'm incorrect, is that all board members are equal. The chair leads the meetings and, is, and signs legal documents on behalf of the district and that's it, has no other authority over the rest of the board members. And so I don't really want to see anything codified that sets someone above the others as far as making decisions or having legal questions. I would encourage any board member, to, if they have a legal question, to talk to counsel. I think that's very appropriate. So I'm in favor of alternative one. I, I mean, alternative two. Any other comments out there? No. So, do we have a motion as to how we want to do this, or do we want to wait and do the whole thing? The, I mean, both items. Uh, well, they could either be done separately or together. Um, I, I'd recommend a motion along the lines of, you know, a motion to direct Council to uh, prepare a revisions to the board manual to reflect alternative X. Okay. So I, I can I can make a motion to uh, do alternate two. Alternative to uh, well, which part? It puts you in the hot seat. So this is this pertains um, to item two, board member communications with district council. You're right. making a motion to uh, right. go with alternative two. Right. Yeah, I would second that for that piece of it too. I might also talk about the first part of this, which is the uh, defense identification. Oh, well, we're going to do them separately, I think. We are. Okay. <clears throat> Good. Are you seconding? To I'm seconding. Okay. Holly, you want to call the... Director Swan? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. So that puts us back to the other item. Gina, uh, Sure. I think I loosely explained the three alternatives and I'm happy to answer any questions. Right. But is the is the same not really here, is the same difference between one and two the sort of steps that are outlined in D is the open um, that's the most important difference yes and what again to refresh my memory is the downside of doing that in open session um, well let me. I, I think I can do this without going down the road of privilege waiver as long as we keep yeah, it at a pretty high level. Yeah. Um, I think that D, if the board desires to tie its hands to make it um, quite a bit harder to approve defense and indemnification than it would otherwise be, um, D serves that purpose. If you take D out, I think there are protection, this, and this is why I have recommended number two, it provides some extra cautions that don't necessarily make it difficult for the board to make its decision based on the advice of counsel. Could we strike D out of your alternative one and go with the balance? Because actually some of the wording there is, is um, I like the change. 
if we didn't want to do the uh, the new plan. I'm just trying to. Could you point specifically to which wording you or do you want me to? Well, in, in alternative two, you've got ABC, uh -huh. and when I compare that to alternative one, ABC, A, B, and C are kind of the same, but the language is a little bit different. But the language in alternative one for ABC looks um, uh, looks better, I think, unless it's just the red lines. And I'm well, that's what I'm. I it's not so, they were essentially so the, the same. Okay, so the so the only difference between alternative one and two is the section D. Yes. Of how difficult we want to make it to reach a conclusion about defending a director for a conflict of interest case. Right, because the only thing I mean, other than requiring you to undertake some um, potentially some confidential procedures here that are sort of safeguards. In alternative two, it requires some additional procedures that are safeguards that kind of make you slow down, think about what you're doing, get some additional input. Um, and it requires the reservation of rights, which is a significant protection. But it does not require the board to go through a, a public process which injects um, some elements into the decision making that may, in my view, may or may not be desirable depending on the circumstances. You mean like politics, for example? Yeah, as opposed to, and I may be a little biased here, but as opposed to legal counsel based on the facts and circumstances. Not to say that, you know, the, the public shouldn't have a say, but I think this process is intended to <coughs> make it very difficult for the board to approve defense indemnification, even in what may be an appropriate circumstance. Even without going to the, to the public and doing it in open session? Because alternative two would not do anything <coughs> in open session other than say we voted to defend the director for conflict of interest. Right. I mean, you, you take public comment, you ensure that everybody's gone through these steps, you talk about it in closed session, and you come back and announce your decision, or just, you wouldn't necessarily announce it, it may just be a letter to the person who requested it. It would be limited public input. Okay. So, any other board comments? I happen to like uh, alternative two, myself. Seems pretty straightforward. You got comment? Uh, no, I don't. How about you? Really? No comment. No comment. Anybody want to make a motion here? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot you people out there. How could I? You're so quiet. Uh, any comment from the public on this item? No comment. Well, since the, I'll, I'll make a motion that we go with alternative two. Well, second. Director any, Swan. Any comment even after that motion? No? Okay. Go ahead. Director Swan? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Falls? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. Thank you. I'd like to thank Gina for working on that diligently, coming up with something that was, I think, a good one. Um, item 10B, Public Advisory Committee on Facilities. Yes, on uh, August 28, 2019, the board uh, directed, board directors agreed to form a public advisory committee for the sole purpose of evaluating the district's administration, <coughs> excuse me, operations facilities needs. Staff was directed to solicit applications from the public to serve on the committee. Staff posted the announcement and application for the committee on the website, and the announcement was posted on Facebook and, and in the press banner. At closing uh, dates of October 30th, two applications were received uh, by closing date and time. Staff recommends extending the closing date uh, to uh, December 2nd, 2019 for applications and expanding the outreach to solicit 
more community uh, members. Uh, do uh, a newspaper or newsletter to our email, uh, email uh, um, accounts, uh, a press banner column, uh, and hopefully the board members could reach out to uh, folks that they know in the community to solicit uh, additional applications and uh, try one more time with better outreach this time. Any board comments? No. Did you get some responses? We have uh, three. Three. Two. We, we have two. We have one, one withdrew, so we have two. Okay. And we want to see a, a committee of how many people? I think you said, what, five? Five or six? Okay. Four members. I mean, there is an alternative here, which is we could see if the two people wanted to join an expanded admin committee for and assign this task to the admin. Um, which I think has people that are motivated and um, actually are looking for a very needy topic to address. And that might be another alternative. I, I, even extending 30 days, I don't know if we're going to wind up with that. You know, the circumstances right now are a little bit different than they were in 2013, 2014, when we had a, the last committee like this that was on the heels of the Taj Mahal and the $10 million. And, there's a lot of people that really got an interest in it. You know, we don't have that right now. So anyway, just something to think about. We can, we can still do the extension of December 2nd and then see what happens, but I'm just saying I think we've got a committee that probably can handle it. Any other comments? I like Bob's suggestion. Okay. Any other comments? I would tend to go over with them. With Bob? Yeah. Okay. So we have a, a ready form committee that we could reach out to these two people. Yeah, that they could, this would be their topic to sort of be meeting. <coughs> now keep in mind that this would have board members on it. The difference is one is all public. The admin committee is two board members and in this case then we'd be expanding it to like seven I think. Uh, so it would be five community members, which is the five. But it would, it would have board members on it. And those committee assignments may change starting um, yeah, next month. It would be nice to find people that had experience in, in you know, different construction and different types of mm -hmm. get it away from the board, but it could go either way. Well, we can certainly try it to the second and see. And if at that point it doesn't go, then I, yeah. would, right. I would say, then let's take another look. Yeah. So that, that's what I would support, is let's do this, let's extend it another month. Uh, so uh, I'll make a motion uh, that we follow the staff recommendation of extending the closing date for the admin advisory committee facilities uh, date to 12 p.m. on <coughs> December 2nd, 2019. Any comments from the public on this? Just to point out that if it becomes an admin committee activity, it's probably, or it looks like at this point that that would be a daytime um, activity. And I think it would be good for this to be something that's evening to bring in other community. Now, it could be the admin committee meeting in the evenings or something. Could, could change it or cycle it through. And a lot of different things you could do. Yeah. Yeah. They're a good point, but a lot of different things you could do. Thank you. Any other comments? You, you've got another comment? Well, the, the 12 noon on December 2nd. I'm not sure where the 12 noon came in on uh, that's, that's a Monday? <laughs> I'm I'm a, I, I know what it is. It has to do with the fact that I will be out of the office ah, for yeah. the entire week before that. And so I will only have that day to put together an agenda. <clears throat> no problem. Okay. Yeah. Following the staff recommendation. I just asking. I just wanted to do clean up. Okay. There was not a second. So I'll second. I, I just wanted to say that we just have consensus to go ahead with this. Yeah. That we wait till December second. Yeah. So we're gonna outreach to the press banner. Mm -hmm. Correct. Our website. We have a, an e-newsletter yeah. that we can we can do. <coughs> uh, 
discuss it here, <coughs> and hopefully the board, individual board members will reach out to people in the community and ask if they're interested in uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the facilities committee. We'll definitely renew that. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, we're to new business. Item 11A, Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency questions. Correct. Uh, the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency <laughs> is a groundwater sustainability agency that was formed as a joint powers authority in June 2017. That's three member agencies, Scotts Valley Water District, the Santa Rosa Valley Water District, and the County of Santa Cruz. And is governed by a board of directors comprised of two representatives from each member agency, one representative from the city of Scotts Valley, one from the city of Santa Cruz and one from the Mount Hermon Association and two private well owner representatives. Um, under the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act of 2014, uh, overdrafted groundwater basins need to sustainably manage by a GSA uh, through the development of a groundwater sustainability plan. Uh, the GSP, the Groundwater Sustainability Plan, must be completed by 2022 and the basin must, re must reach sustainability by um, 2042. In response to many questions asked by members of the board and the public regarding you know, what does the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency mean to the Santa Margarita Valley Water District, we have a scheduled study session with the district's uh, hydrological consultant, John Field, uh, with EKI uh, Environmental and Water uh, Consulting for the January 16, 2020 board meeting. The study session titled uh, Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency and Santa Rosa Valley Water District is to discuss the following. What is the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency? What is its purpose? What does it apply to? What happens uh, if uh, we don't comply? How did Santa Rosa Valley Water District become a part of the Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency? Fiscal implications and what are the key findings, of, uh, uh, findings to date from the process? What does San Lorenzo Valley Water District need to do? Um, what do they need to look out for? Um, and so forth. Uh, Mr. Field will be here to answer questions that basically pertain to the San Lorenzo Valley Water District that a lot of the general public and board members uh, have asked in the past. Um, I'm looking for additional questions from the public and from board members so Mr. Field can be further prepared for this presentation. So you have my favorite question there. Which one? Management areas. Correct. Exactly what does that mean? Right, and one shoe is not fit all the management areas. Right, and I wasn't very popular with the rest of the group for asking that. How many management areas are there? Oh. Yet to be determined. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who knows? Well, I mean, come on, they kind of know what they Yeah, what, five? Five. Five, maybe. Well, that would be one of the questions. Is, right. You know, let's yeah. talk about what those management areas are. Yeah. Um, yeah. That I, I mean, I couldn't get really an answer out of anybody. It was kind of like, well, that's going to be a lot of work. It was. They didn't say that, but it's just kind of what came across. Huh. Yeah. And, and there's other questions people ask: you know, How how do we become involved in, in, in the process to date? Okay. Um, so. It's not be good to, to have a question in the study session pertaining to the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Yeah, I'm not crushing that. I'm, yeah. I, that was one of my questions, though. Gotcha. Was, how many <laughs> um, and uh, Mr. Field's been involved in um, the, the groundwater basin uh, in, in from the early stages. It has a lot of good information. He'll be able to answer a lot of your questions. Also, he'll be available as time goes on as um, to review and work with our directors that are part of San Margarita Groundwater Agency. Do you want questions now or later? I, I, I'd like to have them by, uh, I think I put in not by 12 noon, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> to Holly by uh, January 3rd. High noon. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, so it's something to give you the board some thoughts and, and hopefully we receive uh, from the general public. I know that we've been getting different questions from the general public. Um, would, would it's it's so complicated. The whole... Well, it's complicated on one hand and simple on the other. Yeah, hand, but so. I mean, we've got a million dollar plus person who has 
a lot of information, a lot of information, and it's a lot to digest. It's not like being on a water district, exactly. Um, it's, it's technical, more, there's no doubt it's more technical, technical, that's the so word, would he very be, technical. Would he be able to address our historic if any, overdrafting of the... We could, I can ask that question. We can have him discuss that. Sure. Because I know it's, it's pretty clear that Scotts Valley overdrafted pretty majorly in their area. <coughs> but I don't know that I've ever gotten a feel for what we did or didn't do. I mean, for all I know, maybe we didn't. Um, our area. Good. We can have a... I would ask the board to put together questions. Email them to Holly or myself, and we'll get them to John. And, and Will those questions go on the agenda? Yes, it will be the agenda item and, and then we'll get them answered. Be putting together a presentation based on the questions uh, in the memo right now. You just suggested a good question, which is how does how do overdraft issues relate to proposed management areas? Yeah. That would be very important. Oh, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Now, we do have facilities in Scotts Valley, obviously. So yes, right. we, we do. We do. Yeah. So, yeah. So, and, and we are all in the same office. That's, that's correct. Um, so there's a lot of good questions out there that haven't been answered, and these are be before that this board has been in office. So and we thought it would be good to bring everybody up to speed and try to get their questions answered. Part of the problem is they kind of like, well, you have to do exactly what the other people are doing. It's It's almost... I, a scare tactic, it sounds well, like, but it's we not. Have, we have votes, and uh, yes. you, know, you have you have the right to. Yes. So, so if we have a management area. They're kind of saying we still have to <coughs> have the exact same well, criteria. I think that's too big to try. Yeah. Well, that's what they said at the yeah. last meeting when I asked the question, well, and I I said, then like why that. did they even throw in management? areas if technically it has to be exactly the same as this person's stuff over there. So in other words, those that overdraft the most and those that don't overdraft as much get to do the same thing? Yeah, very much. doesn't seem quite right, but I don't think we're quite there yet, though. To right. make those decisions. And especially with, and I mean, every time I the drive by, the model is not completed yet, we're still Putting data together, and, and every time I drive by Santa's Village or down, you know, Scotts Valley Drive, it's like, holy crap! What to, you know, there's all these buildings going on. But hopefully, we can get these questions answered here, um, and because we do have two directors that routinely, and an alternate that routinely make that meeting or that are, are getting you know, well informed and involved. Um, this is not to step on their toes, um, because. Uh, of their representing the district at the meeting, but hopefully this is to get us more information so we feel more comfortable. I'm getting the sense too that we're not all on the, on the same page of moving forward. And we're probably not. I have a question for Rick. You're proposing that we do this as part of the January 16th board meeting? It'll be pretty much the meeting. It'll be pretty much the meeting. Okay. Right. Um, is that the meeting that you will be attending in January? Uh, I. Because you attend one of the two meetings in uh, each yes, month, correct? Yes, traditionally that would be. Okay, yes. good. Because I think because yeah, Gina has a lot of good background. I was going to say that if you know, if it's, then a question comes up about the state law that the Smigwa came out of, that's the person to ask because yeah. she's an expert. I got a question. Well, I, I would, I was going to say, I no, would no, add that there. if I have any difficulty in meeting, it would be because I'm deposing experts in the first even a more reason that you need to be at that meeting where we talked about it. Yeah. So if you can't, I think we should move it to, sure to a, direct, a director's meeting, a board of directors meeting when she can. You, I'm sorry. Are, are you well, I was just saying that if, if I have trouble making that meeting, it'll be because I'm deposing the experts mm -hmm. in the first comprehensive adjudication in the state under SIGMA, where we're representing the Groundwater Sustainability Agency. It's going to do a phase one trial in February. 
Sounds like it would be nice if we had the legal expert yeah, yeah, on, on that law. Wait a minute. Which site are you on again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. The, the groundwater management agency, but they don't have exactly the same the issues there in terms of how the parties relate to each other are very different than they are here. It's not the same structure. It's not a JPA. Okay. My point is only that I'm sure John and Theo can can address the issues relative to Smigwa. I'm not that's so correct. sure he can address the issues relative to the law that Smigwa came out of, that's, and that's, that's why I think Regina needs to be at that meeting as well. I, I was planning on Gina to be there on the second meeting. Yeah. We have a set next year's meeting yet because the first meeting of the month would be right on January second. So that's probably, probably not going to have the first meeting. We haven't. We will be setting those meetings in December. Um, so we haven't set January schedule yet. So um, can we be flexible so that if she can't make that meeting? We can we can reschedule that that reschedule. intent to when she can. We could reschedule. Sure. Um, I've already rescheduled it once, but that's okay. Um, we can talk on that. But we're moving ahead with this with this workshop. I I just um, or this, uh, would like more technical information from our own guy. Um, I feel like when Lou and I have asked questions, they haven't been really too thrilled about that. And well, one of his goals is to give you information where it's not too technical. Right. To easier to understand. Right. For the non-professional, right. so to speak. Right. Okay. I'm a money person. I'm not, I... You're going to make me go revisit all my engineering texts that are around for it? <laughs> So do we want to ask for, um, I mean, is this just from the board, or are we asking anybody? Ask the general public. I don't, uh, yeah. We've had people in the general public. Virtual has asked the questions. I'm yeah. hoping he'll yeah. submit. I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure anybody, you. Chuck, uh, you know, anybody can submit questions. As long as we get them, you know, I, I think a lot of the questions will be the same. It's kind of funny, you know, who shows up at the meetings is people from Long Pico. Okay. It's really kind of funny. Virgil's not from one. No, Chuck's not. <laughs> well, Chuck's <coughs> the only one that isn't. Virgil? Well, Virgil. <laughs> but I mean, it's really, good. there there are a lot of people there from Long Pico, and there really isn't anybody there from Scotts Valley or Mount Herman <laughs> or any of those other places. It, it, it's just SLV people that come to the meetings and say, hey, what's going on here? Um, that may have been public comment, but I wasn't, I wasn't sure. We, uh, we haven't conducted public comment on this. I, I know we haven't. <coughs> yeah, we haven't. But um, I'm just... There's some things about this whole thing that really... Well, it's okay. All righty. I'll let the public talk. Uh, well. Are you yes, done I, as a board done? Right. One, one more question, Rick. Um, just, just for clarification, your recommendation is that you are asking for questions, not for permission. Well, I'm asking for questions. Hey, did you have any? Okay, how about the public? Do you want to say anything, Debbie? Yeah, just a comment. <coughs> Having attended the last Santa Margarita meeting, and maybe Chuck will agree, the management area concept is hardly been covered at all. It wasn't accepted or rejected. Staff made a comment that they would rather not because it would be complicate their job. But the board hasn't made any decision. There's been no numbers thrown out about how many that I'm aware of uh, if there were management areas. It's just as a concept. In lieu, does that sound about right? Yeah. They floated over it. There were some comments about, yeah, we need to discuss that more, and other people said, no, we don't want to go there, and that's where it was left. So it's up in the air. Okay. Anybody else out there want to say anything? No. Chuck's just keeping his lips zip. <laughs> Got a smile out of you. Um, anybody? Nobody else? Okay. So, you know, I actually went to those meetings when I was on the Long People Board. That it was the Santa Margarita Basin meetings, and they had a whole lot of grandiose ideas that never came to fruition. So, anyway, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm sure they were all free, too. They were all free, yeah. I don't think so. 
Okay. So, any no other comments on this item from the public, from the board, staff. Okay. Put the multer multi-user variance renewals for 1920. Yeah, the finance manager here that will present this on. Uh, so the customer service department has created their annual review each year. This comes to the board. Any parcels that have multiple units on them um, are charged a one-inch rate irregardless if they have a smaller size meter. Uh, we do offer a multiple variance program for if one of those units is not used, um, that they can be charged the five-eighths rate which is the size meter that they, that they have. How do we know that that unit is not being used? They have to sign an affidavit. Uh, they, have to submit, they have to submit their form every year. Um, and during this process, staff does go through and review the consumption and can kind of tell if we think that there is or is not. And at that point, if we do think, the district does have the right to send someone out to, to give it kind of a visual <coughs> inspection. Um, so the seven accounts that were removed were probably because they are using that. Extra Correct. Like, you know, the, usually the case is the property sold, and now someone did fix it up. What a lot of the cases were is that second unit is like a rundown or, you know, something to where it's not really even usable. usable. Um, So, do they have to have a kitchen? I, I mean, what is our, can you have a unit that isn't considered a unit? Because somehow it's not. It uh, there are some criteria kit. for, I mean, it, it having certain running water fixtures to it. Also, yeah, 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 something that. Okay, so, so, I mean, if you have a workshop that has, you know, a hand washing sink, something like that, that's not going to qualify. Right. right. Okay. This is per the district's um, rules and regulations is that this does get reviewed annually for the board to formally, by resolution, approve these people having the multiple yes, but this is normal for water districts. You don't think so? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. We had this a long so, time ago. I mean, I guess it depends on where. <coughs> it kind of. I mean, certain water districts probably do have something like this. Oh, okay. But I don't picture many large cities having something. Like this. But, but they don't. They don't actually have a one-inch meter necessarily. No, they have five. Right. They have a five. So eight, really, so. this is just to avoid putting in two different. Service entries, one for each unit. Is that the is that the trade off? <coughs> it would have required the district ordinance has that any multiple units should be sized with a one inch meter. So we're getting the service charge, but we don't go out and stall a meter. I'm not in the last headed question. Is that fair? They can request it. They have to pay for the up for the increase in meter size. But maybe we need to read. I mean, we, we can go ahead and act on this, but we can. But this might be the ordinance. Order. We can bring the ordinance back to you. This is something from, that was established back in the 80s. Yeah, I, I understand. Okay. I, but there's a couple things here that I'm not. Yeah, maybe we take it to a committee or something like that. I think the finance committee. Maybe if if that'd be okay with the board, maybe to take just another quick look at it. Because I, I, if we're not actually installing it, but we're requiring it, but. Yeah, but then they have to pay for it. Um, I'm going to look at that one more closely. It's essentially, in my opinion, it was providing financial relief to customers that had multiple units when the district deemed that it should be a one inch, gave them the option of upgrading. Um, and then this kind of came out of that because otherwise you would have, people would have been having to pay for it, not even just on the district's end for the meter, but also on their service lines on their side of the property That's as well. I understand, but yeah, I really think there's, there's ways of being able to get to where it maybe it needs to be from an engineering point of view without you know, penalizing people really hard, but I think this is worth another look. So I, I'm uncomfortable with the notion of a virtual one-inch meter that we're actually charging for. I'm not, I'm not comfortable with it. 
Could we take this to the finance committee? Would that be okay? Could take it there. I, I mean, they can say at other water districts can do this. this. I don't finance. In Long Pico, we where, where would it start? We 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 just you know if they had an extra place, we didn't make them get another meter. We well, just well, charged them for two. Well, people piggyback off of us. Yes. After Probably. We adopted, you know, a lot of people piggyback and took our ordinance for bail. Probably. I, I, the, the, I don't want to get too far afield of the agenda, I think, but, <laughs> but, but I am concerned about it. Can we move ahead and approve this, this list? And then approve then this and I agree. We could go to well, some more. One more point. Is there any yeah. legal ramification with this resolution? Do you know, uh, I mean, not, could, could this be viewed as we're giving away money? You know, no, money? this is. While this may be somewhat unique, there are issues like this in almost every law district. It's not so that okay far afield. Yeah, I don't see any issues with this. What we're doing is taking these 34, 36 people and allowing them to be built at the 5 8 rate. Right, right. That's correct, because they don't meet our criteria for multiple users. Mm -hmm. yeah. For all intent and purposes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. Yeah, I would agree with you. Right. Prove it, and I don't know if it needs to go to the committee well, for anything. But I actually heard something different. I heard that we required a inch, but we're <coughs> giving them leeway to go down to a 5 8 inch instead of what would be required under an engineering review or something. Did I hear that? Well, right? if, if they were to be built today, they would be, we would set a 1 inch meter. But these were already existing. So you're basically grandfathering. And it was getting and, and them away from having to pay for the difference in the one inch to five inch. And the people who didn't want the one inch meter, they didn't want to pay for the upgrade, but they understood that they've got multiple units on the property and have to pay for multiple units from the service charge. Yeah, so there's, there's two aspects. One is the grandfather, which means at that date and time, right. and then nobody knew. So we don't add people or anything, right? Sure. This is, you know, so, no. so 30 years ago, this was a bigger list. Right. right. Well, the second issue is. Are we doing them a favor by not moving to a one inch relative to what they would need for their for providing service to their mobile units? Right. Most of them don't have a supply problem or a pressure problem. Otherwise, we would have upgraded them if they had a supply. These were existing; it didn't have a problem. And then there's more to this. There's a there's a date, a grandfather date, that where they would have to pay a connection fee, and they did not have to pay a connection fee. Um, if they were built before such such a date, they just had to pay the by month. Or the, at that time, it was by monthly the monthly service charge on um, the monthly user. Yeah. Legally speaking, I'm more concerned about that yeah. than the connection fee than, than right. yeah. Yeah. But That's a, a long day to go when it was built before we had the monthly user. But again, you have no problem with us approving this measure. We'll take it to committee and we're going to pull it apart and, and research a little further back. Well, why don't you and I talk about it? Yeah. Yeah. This, this was put in by uh, Manager John Johnson, who was a finance manager, more than a district manager, so to speak, big on finances, and he wrote the, he wrote the Maltese ordinance himself. But, but, but you and I talk trickle up and then we decide. Okay, thank you. So. Anybody want to make a motion? Did we go to the public? Oh, public. I keep forgetting you guys. You're so quiet. Okay. Um, anybody want to make a motion? I will make a motion that we approve resolution number 9, 1920. Well, second. Director Swan? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Fultz? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Moran? Yes. <coughs> okay. Um, I am seated. This is on October 17, 2019, the Board of Directors uh, meeting. The Board directed staff to move forward and select a facilitator for assisting with updating the district strategic plan. Managers Partners is a professional management consulting firm specializing in helping local government leaders improve their operations for over 20 years. Um, Greg Larson is scheduled to meet with the board and discuss the process in moving forward with the district strategic plan on November 13, uh, 2019. 
Um, I provided Mr. Larson with all the back data from uh, the admin meeting and the board meetings and uh, the different copies of the strategic plan. Um, uh, I, we did reach out to the board to make sure that this date was available um, and recommend that the board approve uh, having a, a special meeting on November, on, uh, November 13, 2019. Uh, Mr. Larson's uh, bio is in his local from, from Santa Cruz. Uh, it's included uh, experience from a legislative uh, analyst to department head and deputy city manager for the city of San Jose, twice serving as city manager for Milpitas and Los Gatos, and twice serving as director of planning and community development for Scottsdale and Santa Cruz. Uh, he's also ran, I do believe, a couple times for the city council in Santa Cruz. He's local. Uh, Soquel Creek Water used this same firm uh, to move ahead on in some of their planning. Um, I did reach out and contacted other strategic planners, um, selected this individual as someone that really wasn't part of the strategic plan process up to today, um, and more neutral. Um, I had several people from the community voicing support from for one person or another, and I thought I would go with someone that was pretty much uh, neutral coming in and unknown to, to the process uh, for San Jose Valley Water. A neutral person in Santa Cruz? Well, <laughs> neutral to this process. <laughs> Any other comments by the board? No. No? Hello? Um, not other than, you know. Well, well, yeah, I mean, just as part of the process, Lou and I have met and we're, we've started the, getting ourselves ready for the editing process, which will, will come out of this. So um, we will continue to have those meetings and be working in parallel with what happens through the, uh, through the workshops and taking that input and getting it ready for the board meetings and the like. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. And, and this is uh, advertised just like any other board meeting. Uh, you know, it's hard to get into the press banner at this point, but I, could, it, could it possibly get into the press banner? No, it's not going to work. Okay. <coughs> we'll we'll work about, we do have our agenda mailing list, um, okay. and it's gone out on this agenda, so people know, hopefully, people will see it that are interested in coming to me. Okay, anybody from the public? Debbie? Yeah. I'm, I'm a little dense on this one. <coughs> is this a meeting where the consultant is meeting the board? That's correct. It's a, hi, how are you? Or is it a meeting to begin the strategic plan process where the public is going to be invited to do the input? <coughs> I, I, I view this, but this is up to the board, is that it's a, it's a meet and greet with the board and then move ahead on the process. Okay. Um, it's not to discuss the strategic plan at that meeting. That's part of, that won't be the way it's agendized. It'll be discuss the process and, and how you're moving forward. Uh, I guess the board's decision. And, um, we already do have some uh, guidance from the admin committee and we just move ahead with that. Yeah. Will the meeting be held here? This location? Yes. Okay. Yes. At 6.30? What, uh, every time you guys want, I'll take a quick time in the right. house for a special meeting. 12 noon. 12 noon? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. killing us, James. did not say that. <laughs> um, 6.30, what time would you, would the board like to meet? Uh, 5.30. 5.30? 5 5 6. Okay, yes, that was the other part of this. We agreed that we want to have a 530 closed session for performance eval and then 630 for open session. Do we need a motion for that, Gina, or just, no, just move ahead? It was, I apologize, public comment on that Yes. Okay, no more comments? All right, moving on. District Manager Contract Review. 
Uh, Jane, uh, Rick, did you want me to? Yes, I would appreciate yeah. Yeah, okay. that. <laughs> okay, so I, um, I've i quoted here in the memo um, the compensation provision of the district manager's um, contract. And uh, I've noted that at the last board meeting, as a result of the annual performance review process, um, the board uh, awarded a satisfactory performance evaluation to the district manager, which triggers under this part of the district manager's contract an automatic 3% or 3.7% COLA adjustment um, for the year that started October uh, 19th, 2019. I think I got the date right. Uh, and in addition, the board now uh, should decide pursuant to the last sentence of, of Section 3 of the District Manager contract um, whether to provide up to a 5% merit increase based on performance for the District Manager, which would be on the base salary of $180,998 in addition to the 3.7% 3 COLA increase that's already triggered by virtue of the satisfactory performance evaluation. Any comments from the board? So, if you're not hot, I'll comment. Um, the 3.7 uh, would be an increase of $6,696.93. Um, if if he was given a 3% merit increase, that would, along with the 3.7, so that would be 6.7, the increase would be $12,126.87. Um, would be $13,936.85. A 5% would be $15,746.83. That's it, annual. Uh, and basically what it amounts to each year over the 3.7, like if, if you gave them if we gave him 3%, um, it, it's $1,810 uh, each year. So increasing from, uh, say, three years to four years, the increase is only $1,810 or from four years to five years, again, it's 1810 overall. So, <laughs> everybody get my numbers. <laughs> yeah, more or less. <laughs> more or less, okay. I'm glad, um, I'm glad we have exact numbers, thank you for doing that. Yeah, no, I, I didn't want to get caught flat footed and not know Thanks. what it means. We've had that experience. I do have a question. Yes. How are we handling merit increases for staff in general? What is the, what do we have? Staff has a seven step salary schedule. That's right. And there's a 5% so say between, in, in between steps. steps. Well, once you're stepped out of seven, your seventh step, there's no more increases. So Until you hit longevity at X amount of 15 years. So. Yeah. So, where are we in that? Cause, I mean, the last time I think I looked at this, we were we had a substantial number of people that were either at or above the right. maximum. Yeah, staff. I mean, the district mm -hmm. has significant amount of staff with so 15, 20 plus out. years. So and yeah. so each one of those people will be getting a five percent. No, year. it caps at the seven. So we have a lot of people that are capped out that have not been eligible for any sort of merit increase. All those people are years. capped. It doesn't just keep going. It, you can't have you But they, they're getting the 3.7. They will get the 3.7. <laughs> but, yes. but I thought, um, 
I thought I heard that if they were here for X period of time, they they. Yeah, so at 15 years, you'd be stepped out your first seven years, and then you won't get an increase for those next eight years until you hit that 15th year, and then it's five percent for longevity, which is just a one time. Oh, which is a one time. Which is a one time, but and that's reviewed every year. You could lose your longevity if you know, your performance is not satisfactory. So how many people do we have that are eligible for merit increases this year? I say probably less than half. Just because so many people do have such long tenure here. Less than half is 15? Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah probably somewhere, somewhere around that. And that's factored into the budget. We kind of do a rough, because not necessarily everyone's going to get it just because, yeah. But, I, but I, basically, long term people are capped at yes. the right. cost of living. Correct. Well, I mean, I don't know what the cost of living this year, whether it's 3.7 or 2.5. It's 3.7. Our, well, our contract says 3.7. The actual cost of living may be different. could be 2.5, 4.2, yeah, whatever, but the contract It could, ch it could change each year, correct. This right. has been posted, so it will be 3.7. Ours was from the management teams was from the June. Right? Yeah, June. the mid-year. Classified as a fixed 3%. So the other thing is, Rick has worked here since he was 10. So he quit getting... He had no ch eligibility for a merit increase. He only got the cost of living for insurance. Past 40 yeah, for the past 40 years. Yeah, for the past, for, for <laughs> past 40 years. <laughs> I don't know, 25. <laughs> yes, yeah, so... Yeah, he hasn't had one for a long time. He has worked. Any other comments by board members? I, I just want to clarify something. The the time and rank step function increase aside, which is really just going, if I use the military as an example, from sergeant, from you know private to corporal to sergeant. I mean, it's it's a lot geared toward time and rank and seniority and technical qualifications based on certificates. I understand, but what happens if somebody who's in that step <coughs> has an exceptional year? We have no amount of money set aside to award them. It's in the contract that you cannot go more than one step or 5% increase. Does that mean you merit. can't give a merit increase? Correct. Correct. And see, that, to me, that is... That, that's, that's wrong. A, that's a dis... Well, in right my, or wrong, in my opinion. That, that is the rules we have now. we got a disconnect here between the staff and the district manager. I, I'm not sure how to resolve that. And, I think one of the things that I put in this uh, strategic plan was about doing some kind of a, a staffing review. We might even need to be able to update some of the numbers because when you have lots of people over your top tier, that means something's either wrong with the tier, right? It's, there's a lot of issues here. I understand. I, I just, I've never in my 45 years in business been with an organization that didn't have the ability to reward performance. It is extreme with regards to merit or step increases. Merit. It is extremely common in public agencies when you have unions and everything to prevent favoritism. I, I get it. I get but yeah, I mean, you will see some places that will have, uh, you know, we call it a merit being the step, but some places do have, you know, small. Um, Schools, maybe. Yeah, a little bit more, just you know, under five hundred dollars, something like that, that you can get every. And we don't even have year. that. Correct. We do well, not we, have something like that. We're not really the same time we have So the reason I, I asked this question is relative to what what might be contemplated here, and I, I'm, in, you know, it makes me uncomfortable to, to hear some of these things that were You mean making uh, make, uh, setting a precedent? Yeah. I think we've already set a precedent that I don't agree with. Well, I mean, but the rules are the rules. I, I understand <laughs> that, and I can violate the rules, but that doesn't mean I have to like it. I can't argue with there. Well, I, is, it a, a point, is it appropriate to comment uh, on an opinion on performance? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, absolutely. Um, I, as far as Rick being eligible for a merit increase, I'd like to point out that from a year ago when we had a poison within our organization, and I think we all know who that was, you know, we, we've now got somebody as a district manager who's heading us in the right direction. And I think we need to keep that in mind as we think about what Rick is worth to us. 
Uh, at least that's what I am keeping foremost in my mind when we finally have that discussion on a merit increase. Because I think we've, it's night and day, it's 180 degrees from what we're living through under the old district manager to where we are now. I think we're headed in the right direction. I mean, I can use an example of infrastructure as big one. You know, Brian wanted to do quick projects that he could say he, he, he fixed infrastructure when they were really low priority projects that I was against. Rick, on the other hand, we're going, we, want, we borrow more money, but we're going for the thing that's going to really give us a bang for the buck, which is our backbone for the distribution system, which is going to fix our pressure problems, our distribution problems. We can finally fight fires, and it's even going to save us cost by not running those pumps all the time because the, the <coughs> diameter of the pipes change every, every 15 feet or whatever. You know, it, it's nice to be in a good direction, and I want to continue on that path. And the best way to do that is encourage the right behavior. So I've got a question. Because we have to decide what we're going to pay him in a public meeting, and we aren't doing it tonight. Uh, you could do it tonight. Is that a decision? Well, why wouldn't we do it tonight? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, well, I, I, from what Lou was saying, he didn't seem to think we were doing that. I well, thought. I thought it had to be done in closed session. Maybe I'm No, you have, you have to do it in public session. Public session. You have to. Well, then here we go. I, I recommend that we that we give Rick a 5% merit increase. And I'll second that. So, any comments from the public? Come on, who wants their water turned off? <laughs> <laughs> Any comments from the board? I mean, I. Any this other is a negotiation. I, I fully agree with you. I would so support this recommendation. So we have a motion and a second. And any other Swan. comment? I guess not. So, Holly, you want to call the question? Director Spahn? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Pulse? No. President Henry? Yes. Director Moran. Yes. Continue to speak there. It'll be retro back to the yes, October to the of the yeah, Okay. Um, I am E. Yes, the Monterey and Santa Cruz County's Weed Management Area Partners is holding its 20th Annual Central Coast Invasive Weed Symposium in uh, Carmel, California on November 14th. This is an annual workshop designed to encourage active engagement in the conservation of California wildlands. First held at the California State University of Monterey in 1999, this symposium provides a venue to share information about invasive weed control, native plant restoration, and stewardship for uh, Monterey and Santa Cruz County. Uh, Director Moran, Chairman of the District's Environmental Committee, has requested attendance uh, to the symposium. The cost of the uh, attending the symposium is not to exceed uh, $246. It uh, requires a, or there's an estimated cost stipend, registration, travel, and lunch included. The board policy manual uh, encourages members to attend educational conferences and professional meetings when the purpose of such activities are to improve district operations and provides for necessary and reasonable reimbursement of expenses. And in your packet, you'll have the uh, meeting stipend and travel training portions of the board policy manual um, to back up the memo. I don't know if Director Moran would like to add anything to that. If you come in at 264.25, you're dead meat. <laughs> well, I was just going for the 59. Uh, actually, three years ago, I attended, and uh, it was with uh, former Director Bachman that I attended, and I attended at my own cost. And I really didn't anticipate uh, getting any money out of this deal. I uh, went down there before, and I learned a lot of stuff. And uh, they reached out to me because I'm on their mailing list. And um, they're good topics that are discussed down there that are relevant to our water district. And I would like to attend. And you should. Any comments by the board? 
I would just suggest that when you got, come back, you give us a report. A report. Uh, uh, yeah. so we'll so that we'll all yeah. share with you. You, you found that knowledge. I think that's a requirement if you go yeah. to one of these things yeah. that you give a report. Okay. <clears throat> It's a great idea. Totally encouraged. Thank you. Any other comments from the board? Public? No comments. Oh, okay. I also paid my own way three years ago. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's it. Okay. All right. Do we have to vote on this? Uh, yes, it does require yes. a vote. Right. Yeah. It takes approval from the board of expenditures. Director Swan? Do, do we have a motion? No, do we, have, we a have a motion. I'll I'll make a motion that we send Rick Moran to this symposium. Send Rick to camp. I second that. <laughs> yeah. All right. Director Swan? Yes. Director Ferris? Aye. Director Pulse? Yes. President Henry? Yes. Director Moran. Yes. <laughs> you could say it. Could. You could abstain. Yeah. You could abstain, but you don't need to. Yeah. So, oh, consent agenda. Anybody wanting to pull the <coughs> minutes? No. So nothing we have to do there. That's right. Um, just brief reports. Yes, you have the engineering, finance, and business, and, and legal reports. Staff is here, and you are more than welcome to answer any questions. The reason you do not have the operations report is because of the date of the, uh, the agenda. It takes time to get all the information in the field and run the numbers on production and vehicle mileage, et cetera. You will have it at the next meeting. Yeah. And you will see a significant increase in overtime due to that. To our friends in PG&E and, 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 and mileage. And mileage. And mileage. And are we going to prepare, even though it may not go anywhere, are we preparing an invoice to send to them? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, I mean, know they've, it's they've, the been coding, they've been coding. They've been coding all of their time. Right. So we have labor. Mm -hmm. The this last one will be getting all the time for in that are encompassing mm -hmm. all of that. The last, we just started getting the invoices for the first one's rental fees, so we'll be getting the second ones here soon, and then we'll be able to have a full cost analysis of how much each power will be. I mean, I'm surprised there's not a uh, law firm out there that wants to do a class action lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's coming. Yeah. Well, it's, there's a it's tricky because this. If you, if you want to talk about it offline, I'll talk yeah, about it. Is it even any hope where to get a dime out of it? There isn't, is there? Uh, I don't know. $250. I, I'm sure we'll do I've been, I can tell never you why. That. Why, 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 <laughs> I can talk to you. Never said that. Yeah. What, what's the uh, ribbon cutting day for the provincial tank? We have not had just before we go to that, if we're talking about the power outage, I would just like to ask, was there a difference in performance? Uh, what did you learn different from the first one to the second one? Uh, good question. <coughs> um, I found, they found that we knew what gener generators we needed on hand mm -hmm. from the first one, so it was easier to go out and procure and make sure we knew what we were getting on the second round. Okay. And that's probably the biggest. And we lost a generator, a generator um, voltage regulator went haywire and fried a bunch of equipment, which is a problem when you start using generators for several days in a row. You they just don't seem to hold up. Not, not the issues. skated equipment, I hope. Yeah, we lost some skated equipment. Yeah. Right, chlorinator and some other things. Yeah, battery. Yeah, some battery stuff and uh, and, the, the, and stuff. the generator sounds like generator. the generator shot. It's going to be need to be replaced. Not worth. All the customers are taken care of. Yes. No boil notices. No, no boil notices. No out of water. Big basin ran out of water. Um, well, lack of planning, I guess. They didn't have no generators at their location. I mean, we knew how long they were going to last. Yeah. 
Okay. So we, do, so we don't have an inner tie. No, we do not. Is there any way to rig up a temporary inner tie? Even fire hoses um, on top well, of the ground? I didn't even ask. You know, yeah, you know. they didn't. You know, they asked me how to generate it, but it takes a pump to get water to them. The old inner tie, which was removed by a big basin, um, you know, they could have done what we did. And, you know, one generator. And I do believe that I think San Jose Water moved in with a generator and got them back up. Um, but we didn't hear from them until very late. It was from the, through the fire districts and the, and the state. The state called us and said they had those issues. But they did do oil notices and run out of water. Oh, yeah, they did have to put out oil notices. We, this time around, we didn't have any oil notices and maintain storage. Um, so this is actually <coughs> your first power outage. Because Stephanie handled the last right. one. That's correct. <laughs> we see Stephanie are saying neat. That's correct. <laughs> right here for I haven't been here for yeah. either one, so. <laughs> and Nate? The same Nate by far. And Andy. Yeah, great job. Yeah. 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 Great jobs. So, um, so we're turning the barrel so next time, James. So do we that's why, that's have for. orders in for generators that we have in the, in the budget? Uh, have we ordered them? I have an RFP in process. Right. They're not because, because I know somebody who works for the place in Scotts Valley, and he <coughs> said they they've got orders for over a year but, yeah. to, to be filled, and I thought, uh oh, I wonder if that's going to be an issue for us now. Well, I can tell you that the generator companies all look at California as a phenomenal market now, especially yeah. because we're tier four and. Generators in California are a lot more expensive than generators anywhere else. Yep. Tier yeah. 4 is a motor, um, is an emissions yeah. standard that we have to meet that's different oh, okay. than most places because yeah. of uh, higher pollution. All right. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions when? on that? Are you trying to say something? When's the probation tank? Yeah, I was gonna, yeah, they finished paving the road, then we haven't filled it yet. We're getting close to filling. We got a punch list of items. We'll be getting close to scheduling something. We're hopefully starting filling on Tuesday next week. And yeah. uh, we hope to be ready to go online by the end of next week, and then we'll be scheduling. Yeah. We're, we're getting close. We have a Facebook post scheduled for next week with an update with kind of where it's at, and then hopefully we'll have an idea yep. shortly thereafter. For we'll know a lot official. more on Tuesday. Press banner will be there, I hope. And we haven't got that for you. Yeah, yeah, we can get the date it. right. <laughs> <laughs> Never argue with people to buy anything. That's true. Well, I would think the Sentinel should be informed about this. Sure. Well. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. I think um, we plan to definitely have it. Okay. I can say this, I took a uh, tour with James up there, and we went in the tank. That's and, cool. Huh? Uh, oh, wow. It, it was an uh, interesting experience. Wow. Yeah. How, how, how many, so that's, that's we a should be able to get the, the picture that the Sentinel did with the woodpecker um, on the side <laughs> of the redwood tank. Get and the a good that showed it leaking in the woodpecker. Was, yeah, it was chewing a hole through it. That would definitely be cool for me. Yeah. It, it comes up there. It's still online. I've, oh, I've yeah. seen it. I've seen it many times. Yeah. It's a good well, my other point is, um, it's whether the Sentinel covers it, uh, whoever. It's a point of uh, pride that we all should have uh, that we've uh, fixed this uh, problem, and it's a engineering marvel uh, that we've done all this, and we all should be proud of uh, what's been accomplished up there. First of many. Yeah. And uh, another question, did we sign contracts with the Bear Creek Estates Wastewater Waterworks folks? Yes. Is that all so yeah. that they can start work anytime? I'm going to write the notice to receipt tomorrow morning. We just resolved a minor uh, insurance issue. Okay. So, was that... Department Where? status reports and committee reports. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to give a report as legal? Uh, I wasn't going to unless there are questions about what's in the packet. And how about Stephanie? Unless people have questions, I mean, we're closely tracking consumption. 
Okay. And the, the updated graph is really good. It's yeah, I'm curious what consumption in October. It's going to be down. We'll be, yeah, I'm sure it'll be down a little bit for people. Especially with the power outage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. That, does that get added to the invoice too? <laughs> the difference in consumption? Yes. That's a, that, why not? <laughs> why not? We need to get you know more stuff for the lawyers. <laughs> hey, um, so is that all of the department reports? No. No. Well. No, well, I thought we'd talk some engineering over there. But if you have no. any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Any, any part of the panel? Do you want me to talk about the the line slide, or would you like to? Uh, why don't you start, and I'll fill in. Okay. Uh, part of the discussion at the engineering meeting today was we finally have some numbers on what it's going to cost to fix the road going up to the line facility, what we call the line slide project. Uh, we have two options. The first one is to install three rows of secant piles across the face of the slide and remove approximately five feet of the upper slide to reduce the mass of the unstable ground. That option is estimated to cost $15 million. The second option is to install two rows of secant piles across the face of the slide, install an eight-foot diameter, 250-foot culvert to Hesse Creek, remove the same five feet of upper, upper slide mass, and compact the excavated uh, spoil over the pipe. The estimated cost of this option is $12 million. So the, the bottom line here is it's going to be very expensive to fix that road to the Lyon facility, and yet we have no other option because that's two-thirds of our potable water supply for the district. Lou, would you tell uh, us what the approximate uh, percentage that FEMA would pay for that? It, what, what do we figure? 75% from the feds, 12.5% from the state, and we'll probably be on the hook for the rest. Best case. They'll actually pay 75%? Well, yeah. We're, That's the understanding at this point. Maybe it's a okay. wish. Maybe it's a wish for them. So are we, we're closely with them. We should go you know, really close to that. Yeah. Okay. They have been very right. supportive right. because, remember, this, this happened during a state of emergency, so there's no question that... Right. You know they're they're on the hook. It's just for how much and <laughs> they, sent, they sent people out multiple times on that project because yeah. it was such a large project. So now, just, just before we start asking questions, let me just say there, there's not a lot of information. There, there's, there's and I know there's going to be a lot of questions, and we asked them today, or asked a lot of them today. And I, I think that the key thing is we are going out for another um, peer, quote peer, or peer review. And a peer review of, of this data to make sure that, I mean, because this is a staggering figure. So we need to make sure that, I mean, even though the data, I mean, it's a 308 page report, so it's kind of hard to believe that they don't know what they're doing. But, you know, we, we do need to verify this because this is going to be substantial investments for the district over a fairly long period of time. We're guessing three years. We really don't want to get too detailed yes. into this tonight, but we'd be more than happy to bring this back or to the full board. They'd like to discuss it more. Once we have whatever, more. As we move along, as especially if it seems it's not agendized. I don't want to get, want to get too far into this. True, but I just, you know, I bad news is best delivered quickly. And I didn't want this to, to you know, come out in you know, the rumor mill. Darren, did you want to add? No, I can it well. Okay. All right. Committee reports. Any? Well, we, I mean, we, I don't, I don't think we have anything in here, but we had a budget committee mm -hmm. meeting where we talked about the changes required by um, SB 998 for mm -hmm. the payment um, if people are late on payment and what that means, um, I think it's another great, personally in my opinion, it's another great example of the legislature applying a one-size-fits-all to districts our size all the way up to Los Angeles. And um, this is, it, it sounds great, but there's some real unintended consequences that could come out of this for people that have issues with paying their bills that are not necessarily going to be helpful to them. We're going to do everything we can to make it um, 
you know, within the law as straightforward as we can. Uh, Stephanie's putting together a timeline so that people can actually see, okay, this is what happens and where uh, penalties get applied and that sort of thing, but it, it, is, it, is not, uh, it is not a good piece of news. And next step is it'll go to the admin committee because it is um, rules and re rewriting the rules yeah. and regulations sections, and then I'm assuming it goes to the full board because I think rules and regs has to have the whole publishing, and yeah. et cetera. Maybe, maybe not. So, um, but you know, Stephanie did a great job of putting together understandable text. Um, and with the timelines, I think it'll, if people sit down and look at it, we put it on our web page, we you know, do as much noticing as we can, which the admin committee will talk about as well. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to, to get through it. But I, I think you're expecting a lot of calls initially on it, and I, I think that's probably a fair, a fair guess. <coughs> and it can be an absolute nightmare for people who wind up getting themselves deep in debt because they don't get their water turned off for, what is it, 80, how many days? I think it's like 85 days from the day yeah. that the one bill I was, was thinking called. 84. For yeah, something, it, something it, like it can that. be It'll three carry. bills in, in arrears yeah. with the fourth one coming a week after the 84th day. You I mean, man deep. Uh, you're in debt. It, it's scary. Yeah. I don't know what those people were thinking. No, they weren't. So there's, I think we already talked about Santa Margarita Groundwater Agency. Um, I, I did want to thank you for moving the uh, one item, uh, the email from uh, Matt Johnson to a different section mm -hmm. the, um, on there. I was actually trying to figure Written out. Written communication. Yes. I was actually trying to figure out if we in the board were chemophobe jur jurors or vulturing attorneys or something else, but I wasn't exactly sure what Matt's point was uh, on well, that. I did send an email to Tom Ricker asking who he represent, is he representing the county or, or whatever. And they're concerned that the board doesn't take this as an negative Well, I mean, it was, a, it was certainly an ad hominem article. That's right? what. And, and it really was light on uh, links and citations and all that sort of thing. And since it came from his Santa Cruz County address, I'm assuming yes. it's official county, county position. That's exactly what I told him. Right. And I, don't think, I think they wish that he didn't send it, but... How much did Monsanto pay him? To... Well, maybe John can send a follow-up email. Yeah, he's will forward you to wait for oh. Or that Sierra sent. Should we put that in uh, we could. a subsequent we could. agenda? I think that would be helpful. Just got this out. Would you forward that to me too? Sure. Yeah. So, to the whole yeah. Well, I found it particularly uh, discouraging that uh, people that we're trying to work with on uh, invasive species and who we're trying to work with on um, the use of pesticides, that they would uh, send this letter out that was uh, inflammatory. So I found it discouraging to read. It was kind of hard to even figure out who it came from. I had a search to figure out. Well, unfortunately, out. the name was Ted Williams, who was a uh, yeah. hero of mine. Uh, yeah. But not in this case. <laughs> yeah, it, it, that's, yeah, I had to search to see who it really came from. Mm -hmm. The board could uh, respond if they'd like to. Mm -hmm. Let's see what Mr. Ricker has to say, and then you would. We'll see if it deserves a response. I think uh, our board is moving in the right direction, and I don't want to be uh, misdirected, misdirected by someone who's waving a red flag over there. And that's, okay. So that's what I try to uh, restrain myself in. Moving on here, any comments from the audience on here? Debbie? I do about the article, I also find it very disturbing. And just as a note, I didn't believe anybody would really do it, but someone has died from drinking Roundup. Please. So please do not follow the instructions of this writer. He's a crackpot. You know? 
And I'm amazed that somebody even tried it, but apparently yeah. people do. Really? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, they're eating Tide Pods too. They <laughs> <laughs> well, have so many drinks. Washing the Tide Pods in the egg. You guys should get a drink Malathion back in the day and show sure. you how safe it was. But trying to prove well. that it's non toxic. <laughs> you know, we don't need that. I'm, I'm with Rick. We need to just stick to a point. I think they're swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Too much Whoa. of that stuff. Darn it. Really? So. I guess we're through the agenda. Everybody. Halloween went good? Okay. Real quick. What? Halloween went good? Um, oh, yeah. Halloween was, I've got 40 megabytes of photos. I'm just trying to figure out how to send them to somebody <laughs> that can put them on the website. I had every, uh, all, tons of kids, uh, every monster, ghoul, and uh, uh, childhood uh, nursery rhyme character you can imagine came by the, the bank in Felton where we were set up next to. Uh, Liberty Bank there, and uh, it was great. It was very well uh, attended. I think it we lasted until about a quarter to eight and uh, wrapped up. But uh, lots of good kids, uh, big hands, you know. Once they, once they pull their fingers out of their nose, they're in the candy. <laughs> and then off they go. And so a whole did, you, did you dress up? Unfortunately, no. Oh. I, had, I had come from the insane factory over the hill. And oh. I was still wearing my clown outfit, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you did dress up. <laughs> you were dressed up. Well, yeah, in a matter of speaking, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but no, it went really well. And a lot of people were commenting on San Lorenzo, because we had that sign that you yeah. made, that gorgeous big sign. Yeah. We put it on the fence, and everybody was just like, oh, wow, San Lorenzo Valley Water. Hey, thanks for keeping the water going during whatever the last thing was. A lot of a lot of people uh, very uh, very complimentary of the water district's ability I mean, to keep the water flowing yes. two, during two, those two outages. Yeah, yeah, two power outages. Yeah, there was a lot of a lot of uh, attention about that. And they were, oh, hey, good thing, glad you're here. You know, it was a very well, right, uh, a thought of thing. So Bob, good idea on giving away. Dental cream and uh, felt. You know, it's for the kids. Yeah, it's for the, kids. It's for the children. Right? And, but yeah, that uh, went well. Yeah. I actually handed out the candy because I was afraid that if I just let them put their hands in, <coughs> it wasn't going to last. It was. It was not so as get ready to, It was not as big a, uh, a turnaround look because of the traffic jam on uh, uh, 17 and then on the 9. It was backed up for two hours on 9. Oh wow! Yeah. It was clear past the mountain store. Yeah. <laughs> Working. Okay. So, and I believe we can adjourn. And right. it is 808. 808. 808. A new record. It's President Henry.